Hi, my name is Edward, and today I'd like to explain how to use um, the debug mode for our Metro Maps of the New web News web application to make modifications to layout and uh, get this very nice layout that you can see here right now. So, in order to do this, we have to first go to debug mode. So, one control F5 away, and we now see that the layout is done using a force-directed algorithm. So if we go ahead and turn off labels, you can see that you can drag things around and you know they uh, automatically reposition themselves depending on charge. Now, let's uh, go ahead and remove this extraneous um, uh, visual element. and zoom out so that you can see the debug controls as well as the diagram. So there are a number of uh, uh, sliders here and they correspond to various parameters of the force-directed layout. Um, so for example, each of the particles is a charged particle. So if we move the charge slider, then we can change what the charge on the particles are or reduce the charge. When we reduce the charge, the particles come together because another force called gravity is pulling them inwards. But if we set the charge to some value, then they will stay roughly spaced apart. We use gravity to spread nodes out or to contract them in. And we can also change the distance of the links between, between the nodes. Now, uh, when we uh, initially uh, went about doing this layout project, um, we only had these parameters. So these are standard parameters for force-directed layout. But uh, it's very hard to get um, a metro map that looks like the one you saw at the very beginning of this presentation with only those. So we have three special forces which we've implemented. Um, the first force is called the octo-force. Now if we turn on the octo-force, what this force does is it takes all of the edges and forces them to be octolinear. Now, you may notice that there are two sliders between each of them. This is because when you click on a node and try to move it on the graph, um, you may want to relax the constraint temporarily so that you can place a line in a non-octolinear state before, before the, uh, the force directly loud snaps it back. If you uh, always force um, the octolinear force to be on, then it's very hard to make changes because the uh, edge-directed layout will automatically correct the change for you. So that's octoforce. Monoforce is a force which takes the chronology of events and forces them to uh, obey a particular ordering. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but if we turn on labels, you can see that as you go down and to the right, the dates on the um, events are increasing. This is not in general true when you are moving nodes around, but now in this mode, um, once you do that, uh, the nodes will snap back into place to maintain this topological ordering. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, we have a force called time force. What, so you may have noticed this legend on the bottom of the graph. So what time force does is apply an a force on each node, pushing it to the point in time which it uh, happened. So we get this very nice, you know, uh, graph, which kind of looks like what we started off with. Um, you may notice that there are, you know, a bunch of kinks. For example, the uh, lines are sort of haphazardly angled, but we can fix that easily enough by turning on the autoforce. Now, you just saw the graph contract like that. You may be wondering, well, why did that happen? Well, remember that when I um, change a parameter on the graph, we also relax the constraints. So if I would like time force to always be turned on, then all I need to do is set it on the one level. Now let's uh, drag these nodes around. Um, the thing about our layout algorithm is that it is a local algorithm. So in some events, it can end up in, uh, in situations which are not the uh, global optimum. Oops doesn't want to cooperate with me there, so let's just set that up. When you've got a node in a place you want it, you can double click it. It will turn gray in that situation, and then it will not move. So it's a fairly handy trick. 
and now we have uh, roughly gotten the graph into a stable configuration. So let's just set that and move that over there, and there you have it, a metro map. So once you've finished uh, playing around with the graph, you know, fixing nodes and working out those global optimization problems that humans are quite good at doing, but machines are not, you can finally dump the layout and that layout can then be exported for use later. And that's it. That's all you need to know to uh, make very cool Metro map graphs.